What's up YouTubers and plant lovers? It's Justin and today I was going to show you how I care for my burrow's tail. Now, the scientific name is Sedum morganianum, but I'm sure you've all heard it uh, called the burrow's tail, the donkey's tail, the horse's tail, I think they even call it the lamb's tail too. Anything that kind of resembles the pendulous uh, kind of similarity to an animal's tail uh, has pretty much been called uh, every name under the sun that resemble any kind of animal's tail. Uh, now, this is a really easy succulent to take care of. Full grown, they'll get to about six feet tall which I'm six feet, so uh, I mean it's pretty huge for one of these uh, trailing plants. As you can see, mine is uh, a little, probably about a year's old, somewhere in there. I just got it as a gift a couple days ago. I used to have one a long time ago, um, and then I left it with a friend at college. So I haven't had one in a couple years, uh, but like I said, I got this as a gift, and uh, I really do like this plant. Now, it can be a little finicky uh, because the stems and the little uh, leaves are easy to kind of fall off. So whenever you pick a spot for this plant, make sure you put it somewhere that it's not gonna get brushed up against or bumped into. And if you have it outside, make sure you place it in an area that it's not gonna be battered by strong winds uh, because you will end up losing your plant, a lot of leaves and a lot of stems also. Uh, so be very careful of that. Now these plants are native to around Mexico and Honduras. So they are used to the tropical life and like I said they are a succulent uh, so they do like really bright kind of filtered light uh, they don't really like a lot of hot direct sunlight uh, because that can kind of bleach your leaves out and your stems out and they'll turn rather kind of a greenish yellowish pale instead of the pretty bluish green that you kind of see here Now, uh, they do flower, uh, but grown indoors, it's really rare for them to flower. Um, so if you do have yours that is flowering, uh, you're doing something right. Uh, but grown outside, they usually do flower. And I believe like um, bees and flies are attracted to their little pink, uh, pretty flowers. Um, so if you do see them, they are really pretty flowers, but they are really kind of small. So uh, that being said, uh, they do flower better outside than indoors. Now, you'll see the pot that I have it in. It's just a kind of store-bought little plastic pot with a little flimsy hanger on it and everything. That is fine for now, but as the plant gets kind of more mature, uh, they tend to be full grown at around six, five or six years, somewhere around that. Like I said, they do get to be about six feet long, but these leaves are all full of water here. So uh, imagine these kind of pendulous stems full of leaves and water, uh, that would make them really heavy. So you're gonna need a strong, heavy kind of pot to keep this plant into, uh, otherwise it'll get too heavy and kind of fall apart and break if it's too flimsy. Uh, so be careful of that. And as you can tell, the leaves kind of do trail down. So you need to have it in a kind of like an urn or something kind of tall so it can kind of cascade, maybe down a wall or a hanging pot would really be kind of best for the plant because they do trail a whole lot. Now, as I was saying earlier, light is kind of on that fine line right there for this plant. They do like kind of bright shade. Uh, and as I said, it will bleach it out if it's in too hot or too direct sunlight. An east facing window usually does it pretty well. Uh, it'll get plenty of morning sunlight there and kind of be protected from the sun during the hotter part of the day. Um, and if you do have it outside, you'll want to take care to kind of put it maybe up in a tree or underneath your porch so it'll get a little bit of light but not a whole bunch. Now water is another important factor for this plant too because it needs a lot of water to keep its leaves all plump and crisp. but. If it gets too much, it will succumb to root rot really easily. So uh, ideally, they say around the summertime, you want to water it about every kind of eight or nine days. Uh, pay attention to the soil. Uh, if the top inch, inch and a half is dry, you can probably go ahead and add a little bit more water in there. Um, but during kind of the cooler months or something like that, you want to water it probably every 14 to 15 or 16 days. Uh, but make sure your substrate in there is on the uh, quick draining side, something that is designed for the cacti and succulents uh, because if it holds in too much moisture, uh, it will 
fall apart and succumb to root rot and just won't look good at all. Now, the ideal for watering is that you want to do it profusely but infrequently. So you want to give it time to dry out in between waterings, but you also want to give it a whole bunch whenever you do water it. And make sure that a lot of water drains out the bottom of the pot. That way you'll wash away any kind of sediments or uh, salts or anything that build up from the fertilizer or just to kind of accumulate there naturally. Uh, and again, I don't keep a saucer under this guy because he does not like to have wet, saturated feet all day. So if you do have a saucer, it's not that big a deal. Just make sure that after about 20 minutes, you completely drain the saucer or you could have some problems with rot on your plant as well. Um, temperatures, they cannot survive freezing temperatures. Uh, so anywhere about 45 to 50 degrees on up to about 80 is kind of ideal for them. Uh, so if you do have it outside in the summertime, make sure it does get a little protection from the hotter part of the sun during the hottest part of the day. It is a really great plant to have. Uh, this plant is not toxic to any uh, people or pets. Uh, horses, dogs, cats, anything of that nature, they are fine to kind of nibble on a little bit. And as I said earlier, the leaves do fall off rather easily. Uh, so if it's in the floor, it's probably not going to hurt anybody. Uh, but just be very careful of that um, because the ASPCA does say that it is a non-toxic plant. And another reason why it is a really popular plant is because not too many things actually ail this plant. I think with pests, Every once in a while you might have a little problem with aphids um, and mealybugs can kind of get in there too. But other than that, uh, aside from the rot, uh, this plant is a really easy plant to take care of. And again, you don't really have to kind of worry about pests with this thing either. So that makes it a really good plant to actually keep and have. And another area I kind of wanted to cover is fertilizer with this plant. Now, typically I will give mine some worm castings about twice during the growing season. Uh, they're not really big, heavy feeders, so you don't want to fertilize them a whole bunch. You just want to give them a light kind of fertilizer, maybe a 20-20-20 kind of diluted by half or even three quarters um, because uh, they will get a lot of salts that build up in the substrate and kind of uh, choke out your plant that way too. So to recap with the fertilizer, you don't want to give it too much. Like I said, a 20-20-20 well-balanced fertilizer will suffice, but I would do it no more than once a month and dilute it by at least by half. As I said, they aren't heavy feeders. Um, I do give mine some worm castings at least twice or no more than twice during the growing season. Probably early spring and then somewhere around the midsummer, And then after that, I probably won't even give it any kind of fertilizer at all. Uh, but if you don't have any, the uh, well-balanced kind of a 20-20-20 will suffice, and uh, I would not feed it more than about once a month. Now, that's really all I know about this plant. I just wanted to show you guys that it is a really cool succulent to have. Uh, not too much kind of ails it. It just needs kind of light, bright, filtered shade, quick draining soil, a little bit on the acidic side, but more towards neutral. And then with water, I would go about maybe nine days during the growing season. Could be about eight. You just kind of got to stick your finger or a moisture meter down there and see how wet the soil is. And if about the first inch, inch and a half is dry, go ahead and add a little bit more water in there and the key to watering it is um, profusely but infrequently uh, so remember these are succulents and they usually thrive on neglect so you don't want to feed it too much you don't want to give it too much water and the light is just kind of right on the line now another thing I know about this plant is the propagation uh, they are really easy plants to propagate I've never done it, uh, but I hear that they are pretty easy plants to kind of propagate. Uh, you can pretty much determine uh, whatever kind of stem you size you want, uh, and then clip it off where you desire it, uh, and then move about, remove about the bottom third of the leaves, and then just kind of let it callus over. Uh, it could callus over in a couple of days, but it could probably take a couple of weeks. Uh, but you want to make sure it does form a callus before you stick it down in the substrate. And typically the longer the uh, stem is, you may end up having to kind of pin it down with some pins into the substrate so it doesn't actually fall out. Uh, and it can take several months. But if you guys have any questions or concerns, or if you've ever uh, owned one of these burrows tails, let me know how it's gone for you in the comments. And while you're at it, hit the subscribe button or the bell next to it. That way you'll know any time that I've uploaded a new video. You guys take it easy, have a good one, and don't forget, always plant prudently. Thank you, YouTube.